Hello friends, this is day 4 of 2023, 10 days of prayer. And uh, our theme is back to the altar, back to the altar. You know, that's a place of connection. Um, today we're going to talk about the idea of to rebuild it. So, so we call it rebuild it and he'll come back again. You know, if you rebuild the altar... God will be back. That's the secret of getting God back. Again, our title today is What Brings God Back? Let us pray. Father, we thank you this day, January 14. We pray that you will be with us as we meet with you here. As we learn what it means to bring you back into our lives. And uh, what it means to build the altar or rebuild the altar. Or repair the altar or whatever stage we are in our lives we pray that you will meet us there and bless us in jesus name amen amen friends and uh, today we are actually looking into this very important very very important i mean it's 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 actually exhilarating it's it's powerful our text today comes from 1 Kings 18 verse 30. We read, quote, And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Powerful stuff. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 30. God's altar had been broken down. Why? Because Baal worship had been introduced into Israel. The worship of Baal, you know, was the uh, main thing. That's what they were doing. But, but, but God, God was saying, uh, no, if you want me to come back, because there was drought in the land. There was no food. And people were suffering. But, but the, the prophets of Baal and, and Jezebel and Ahab, they kept clinging to their false gods while the altar of Jehovah was there in ruins. And God was not very close to them. But Elijah was the man of God. He was jealous for his God. And God had pointed him and told him, you know, to bring re revival, to unite uh, the estranged heart and to uh, tell them that they should return back to the altar of the Lord and abandon the altars of Baal. You know, on what altar are you worshipping today? Some people are sacrificing their health and their vitality on the altar of uh, indulgence, of tobacco, of uh, eating indiscriminately, inappropriately, of pleasure, of sex, the the altar of fashion. All of these different altars are, you know, taking the place of God in your life. And God may not be near and uh, you may be experiencing some things that you feel not supposed to be in your life. So here's Ireland White describes uh, Israel at this particular time. Here's what she said. Quote, The earth is parched as if with fire. The scorching heat of the sun destroys what little vegetation has survived. Streams dry up and lowering herds and bleating flocks wander hither and tida in distress. Once flourishing fields have become like burning deserts, a desolate waste. Once prosperous cities and villages have become places of mourning. Hunger and thirst are telling upon man and beast with fearful mortality. Famine, with all its horror, come closer and still closer. That's uh, Prophets and Kings, pages 1 to 4 and 1 to 5. That, that was what it was like in, in Israel. It was a time of national apostasy and the retribution of God was heavy upon the land. These people, they know, I mean, they knew that God had uh, delivered the children of Israel from Egypt. They knew 
that God forbade the worship of other gods. But, but somehow, they have been deceived or even sometimes coerced by Jezebel, you know, and the weak Israelite husband to worship Baal. So, at this particular point in time, they still claimed to be the people of Jehovah, but they were worshippers of Baal. And God said, no, 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 I can't take that. That's, that, that's why he sent Elijah to them. And there on that mount, Elijah said, you know, before he called the people to himself, he said, why limp ye between two opinions? Why are you here and there? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And then he called the people to himself, repairing the altar. Powerful stuff. As the people watched that day, as the prophet, you know, standing on Mount Carmel, repaired the altar of the Lord, they looked. And he, of course, put the sacrifice upon the altar. And then, as he was praying, fire, fire came down from heaven and devoured devoured the sacrifice and the people fell down on their faces as if the fire was going to devour them and they said the Lord is the God and the Lord is the God and that was a revival but today there is spiritual drought in many souls I mean in their souls the spirit of God is not there there is spiritual drought you can know by the lovelessness by the ins, be, be being insensitive to people, to, to the needs of people. You can know when you, know, you no longer take the light in, in praying and studying the Word of God. There will be a drought like, like the hills of Gibor. And uh, your soul will not be close to God. So... We are told here that uh, greater than physical drought that gripped the nation was the spiritual drought that left God's people so thirsty and faith depleted. Does that describe your own situation today? Israel was ruled by the evil king Ahab and his wife Jezebel. Ahab's Sidonian bride had helped to weaken his allegiance to God. And it was into this catastrophic spiritual apostasy that God called the prophet Elijah. Elijah was a man of his time. He was a man of faith. He was a man of prayer. Uh, he was a man of courage. I mean, there were times he lost his courage, but he had some courage. He could summon the gods to go and speak to the king. He was, you know, a man of God, a man of faith. God needs to raise more Elijahs today. Elijah rebuked the king for importing idolatry. So, of Elijah, Ellen White writes, I like, I like this description of Elijah that Ellen White gave. Professor King's page 119, Ellen White said, There dwelt in the days of Ahab a man of faith and prayer whose fearless ministry was destined to check the rapid spread of apostasy in Israel. Is there apostasy in Israel today? And does God still need fearless individuals with fearless ministries to check the rapid spread of apostasy? So Elijah spoke to power and he, when he came to Mount Carmel, he was rebuilding the altar. After the false prophets of Baal and Asherah failed to get their gods to send fire, it was at the time of the evening sacrifice, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 36, that Elijah called the people near and rebuilt the broken altar of the true God. We are told that in a very real sense, Elijah was not just calling the nation back to the altar of true worship, rather, he was calling the nation back to the altar of regular systematic worship of the true God. Israel's corporate worship altar was broken. Is the corporate worship altar of your family, is it broken? What about your personal altar? Is it broken? But Israel's personal and family altars had been broken long before. 
before the corporate altar will be broken, before people do not like to come to church on Wednesday to pray back to the altar, they have stopped praying at home. And that is the truth of the matter. If we really know that we need God, we will be there every Wednesday. Or I don't know the days you meet in your church. Okay, to pray to God. Because prayer is our connection with God. There was a man, Daniel, who would rather die than not pray. And Jesus, who was God, still prayed when he was in his humanity. You know, so God is calling us today. So what is it that brings God back? It was the restoration of the true heartfelt worship in the family circle, individually, that moved God to respond at Carmel. Okay? So there are people who are building. Unfortunately, there are people who are, you know, neglecting and even destroying the altar of the Lord. Elijah's first act of national spiritual revival was to rebuild the broken altar of God. People have neglected the altar of God. If your personal uh, family worship altar is broken, rebuild it and let the fire of God's presence consume all who gather to worship Him. It's time to pray. We need to pray. Our scripture for praying today is 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 30. And it reads, So all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Let us pray. Father, help us to come near to you today. Like never before, we hear your call. We hear your clarion call in our souls to come close to you. Come close to your word. Come close to your true messengers. Come close to you. You, you, you are telling us, draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you. Oh, Father, help us today to come to you, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Help us to come to the altar to sing praises to you. Yes, to repair the broken altar of the, of the Lord in our hearts, in our, in our families, in our churches. Lord, the word of God, the true word of God is preached only but in few pulpits today in the church. And, and, and the souls of your people are dried like the hills of Giboah. Oh Lord, I, I pray today that you will step in into our lives and, and help us to respond to your call to hear your word and to rebuild the altar. and Help us to rebuild the altar of righteousness. Help us to rebuild the altar of God where we meet you. Help us to rebuild the altar of truth. Help us to rebuild, oh Father, the altar of Jesus Christ. And help us to know you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let us thank God for his goodness in our lives. Let us thank him for, for keeping us alive. Let us thank him for his greatness. And let us uh, pray that he will receive our thanks. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We glorify your name. We pray that today you will be with us. Keep us connected to you. Uh, we thank you because there is the privilege to come back to the altar. And then you said you will come back and meet us there as we worship you. As we sing hymns of praises and thanks. And hymns of repentance. And hymns of instructions that are derived from the word. We pray that you will meet us at the point of our need. And bless us. Oh Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. We come to you today and we confess our sins. As a family, we have neglected the broken altar. Forgive us and accept us back as we return, as we climb the mountain to pray. Lord, we pray that each father listening to this program, Lord, will begin to become the center, to repair the altar in the family, to gather the family, the wife and the children. We pray that each mother in the absence of the father, we pray that each child we gather there as we repair the altar, as we open the word again, we pray that your fire will fall upon our souls and, and revive us and accept our worship and fill us with power and grace. Forgive us our trespasses of neglect, our trespasses of forgetfulness, Yes, our sin 
of doing things that we should have been doing. Father, help us as a church. Help us as individuals and as family in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray for guidance. We pray today. I want to pray for, Lord, the, the, the viewer now. I pray that your son will be guided aright in that decision of his spouse um, to find a, a life partner. I pray for your daughter too. I pray that they will not make mistakes on this point. I pray that you will guide them. I pray, Lord, for that your child who is uh, uh, looking for what kind of business will be good. I pray that you guide. I pray that your guidance will be upon our lives. I pray that you will help us in, in whatever we are doing as we seek your face to guide us and to bless us in Jesus' name. Uh, let us pray for our church. I, I, we pray today that we will desire, O oh Lord, to be filled with your Holy Spirit. And that your, your, your grace will, be, will, will fill our lives. That your presence will come back to our church. That as a church, you will help us not to entertain evil. Not to follow false prophets and false teachers in the church. Not to follow power-loving you know, people who do not share the word. Uh, we pray that you will raise Elijah's in our church uh, who will come to the altar with the fire of the Lord and will, will call upon the name of the Lord and your presence will be with us. We pray that you will raise such men in our midst and we pray that as the rain begins to fall, our souls will be filled with the, with the power of the latter rain. Uh, let it be so in the church so that we'll go and finish the work in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for our community. We pray for our families. We pray, Lord, for our leaders, national leaders. We pray that you will be with them. Give them wisdom. Help them to make uh, right decisions. Uh, medical professionals and scientists, uh, we pray that you help us in Jesus' name. Let us find time to, to, to hear God speak to our souls today regarding the altar. So, Father, help us. Help us today. Take all the glory and all the honor. Thank you for letting the fire fall upon our souls today. Letting the rain, the latter rain, Lord, wet our souls today for you. Fill us with power and grace and love. Thank you today. We praise you. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. Speak to us about the altar, about how to repair the altar in our families. Revive us again, O oh Lord, at that point and come back and meet us. And Lord, bring back the rain into our souls. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen, friends. So let us go to the World Church Prayer List. We pray, Lord, for Sabbath School Personal Ministries Department in each local church as they seek God's plans, God's plan and reach out to the communities with loving service, uh, Bible study and personal witnessing. Lord, that is what Sabbath School is all about. We pray that you do it for us and bless us in Jesus' name. We pray for Adventist Development and Relief Agencies, ADRA, as they meet practical needs of people worldwide. We pray in Nigeria that ADRA will be restored and there will be better, even better leadership here. And that people will be touched and your name will be glorified. And um, your church will move on and your message will be given. We pray for Adra in Jesus' name. We pray for the 16 million people in the six least rich cities of South Pacific Division. And Lord, we, we thank you. We, we, we pray that you will please raise modern day Waldensian students who are willing to serve you in difficult places in Jesus name. Amen. We pray for Adventist members who face persecution and imprisonment because of their beliefs. And we pray that you bless them. Pray that you will also empower them and console them and give them courage in Jesus name. We pray for the people in the least rich cities in Southern Asia Pacific Division to know Jesus. Oh, Father, millions of people, people groping in darkness, 
Oh Lord, set our souls afire today and bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so thank you, Lord, for your goodness and mercy. Thank you for this time of prayer. We pray you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, friends. Uh, it's been an awesome time in the presence of God. Let's continue to, to praise the Lord and, and to be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.